Hey, what's going on guys? So let's take a look at the most foundationally important science fiction film within the symbolic and mythological lore of Hollywood, Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. I know this film has been dissected a million times over, and my interpretation is bound to have some overlap with other more esoteric breakdowns out there. But I will attempt to non-dogmatically with my own flavor of language to build a unique interpretation. So with that being said, let's enter the void of no thingness, emptiness before emptiness itself even existed, and begin the journey through the fabric of space itself. So before I get fully started, I acknowledge that some of this could be reading too far into things, but given the obsessiveness of Kubrick and the compulsive, calculated way in which he worked, I feel his work should be looked at in the same way. So for good measure, maybe throw out 20% of what I say, because it might be reaching too far. The film begins with the viewers themselves placed within the black, empty void, filling the movie screen, paralleling the dimensions of the black monolith itself. The audience is in the monolith, the black, empty void of potentiality, which all thought is birthed from. The black, empty void which gives space for all things to be experienced, in the inevitable progression of consciousness giving birth to life, the cosmic womb. Out of this blackness, we next see the emergence of planetary bodies and stars, the rising astrological alignment with Earth and the Sun paralleling a symbol for man, with the Earth acting as the body and the rising Sun in the place of the head or illuminated mind, the birth of light or thought within the emptiness of space, 2001, a space odyssey. Next, we are taken to the dawn of man, clearly a Darwinian take, but again, I want to do this analysis non-dogmatically and simply describe what the film actually is. We see biological life existing in the most primal and animalistic states, functioning purely off of instinctual patterns, thoughtless animal life. I also do think that there was an intention by Kubrick to make these creatures pitch black to correlate with the monolith. The primate creatures function at a very low state of consciousness, so it's inevitable that they exist in a us-versus-them tribal-like war state. The next morning, the otherworldly black monolith arrives and makes contact with the tribe of animals, which corresponds with the higher celestial alignment. As above, so below is a concept built into all aspects of this film, in terms of the holistic micro- and macrocosmic correspondence. The contact with the monolith catalyzes something new in one of the animals, the idea for the first ever piece of technology. The quick flashback to the monolith and emerging sun just before he gets this idea, in my view, is a way of showing the emergence of thought. The emergence of the first idea for technology, a thought illuminating the mind. The black monolith is a perfect geometric form from the realm of the absolute or the perfected, a living symbol for the infinite void which all thought emerges from. And at this point, the idea for using a bone as a weapon or piece of technology, granting this tribe of monkeys hunting and resource advantage. You'll notice in the tribal warfare scene, the group with the weapon technology are in a more upright bipedal position versus the opposing tribe position still hunched over on all fours. The boner, I mean bone, is then thrown up into the future and we see the phallically shaped spacecraft voyaging through space. The first piece of technology, the bone corresponding with technology taken to the nth degree, a spacecraft and the emergence from Earth. We also see a space station with the X within the O aesthetic, according to Dark Occultist, a depiction of the Mark of the Beast, but on a purely abstract level, the X is two finite lines of intersection meeting or synthesizing with a singular infinite line of non-intersection. X, the finite, O, the infinite. So now apply this to the progression of the scene. Finite earthly man through technology meets the infinite, the black abyss of space. This is the seal of Jupiter, by the way. The choice of Pan American on another phallic shaped craft may be intended to correlate with the pagan deity Pan, which has phallic correlation. The white outfits of the attractive flight attendants Okay, maybe I'm taking that a little bit too far, sorry. The pen, an instrument of symbolic expression of thought, floating in space, an instrument which births ideas. 
Anyone want to join the Pen15 Club? The target or destination of this flying craft, the X within the O, the place where the infinite and finite meet. Here is a alchemical symbol for Earth that may be relevant, maybe not. And then all of the attractive female workers just happen to be wearing pink. Sorry, I'll never mind, never mind. Here is when things start to get a little weird. So the Hilton Space Station, right? Now let's take a look at the Hilton Hotel at the exact location of 2001's Ground Zero. The Hilton Hotel is made to look exactly like the black monolith from 2001, and it stands in exact proximity to 2001's 9-11 or Ground Zero. The point in time where the two collapsed and became one. 2001. Zero, zero, two separated dialectical parts or pillars, synthesized or amalgamated into one. Zero, zero, two into one. In an hour and ten minutes. Macrocosmic sexual union. The odyssey or vehicle consciousness takes through space itself as life. The different points where the two separate parts, matter and spirit, or infinite mind, meet and align, represented by the monolith and the progression of life into higher states of being. In hour and ten minutes. Howard Johnson's very phallically charged name. It is very appropriate that Dr. Floyd then talks with his young daughter, and the topic of conversation is her birthday. The mechanism of birth, reproduction, the infinite and finite meeting, birthdays. What does she want for her birthday? A bush baby. Bush babies are pretty awesome and precious. I hope she got one. Next, we travel towards the moon in a different sort of spaceship. This craft holds a more feminine or curvaceous shape, much like a womb, you could say. Could I say? You could say. The red cockpit pun not intended in this case, may also be intentional on that level as well, or maybe I am just looking too far. When Dr. Floyd touches the monolith at the moon location, the positioning of the camera and lighting I find to be interesting. Floyd with three rows of four behind him touching into the monolith. Twelve lights, twelve being a number of complete astrological cycle, months and zodiac, also the as above, so below thing going on with the reflection coming off of the monolith. The contact with the moon monolith is completed with higher celestial alignment, involving now the moon and earth in switched positions, directly followed by the Jupiter mission. And the next spacecraft that we see has both a womb-like quality as well as a phallic section going into the rounded feminine shape. So sun and moon, male and female, two in one. Inside this phallically inseminating craft is space men, or semen of space, pun intended. One of which is Dave Bowman, future star child, the arrow shot into and through the eye of Hal. The brilliant camera work going through this cylindrical rotating craft I also see as a way of depicting the cycles of the zodiac. Frank airboxing, symbolizing man's progression and fight through the cycles of space and time. Dave is first seen inverted in the all-seeing eye of Hal. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. Again, we have the mentioning of birthdays coming through a video call, making a sort of zodiacal connection with Frank, who is just running through the zodiac. The cryopods aesthetic foreshadow coming deaths of the crew, as they look very coffin-like, fitting that Dave's artsy human imperfected Sketch renderings are shown to the cold, dead, all-seeing eye of Hal. Also, the chess game foreshadows Frank's coming death. Hal attributes his mistakes in calculation to human error, of course. Not that there was any actual error in the first place in my mind. It was simply Hal scheming the entire time. But the error Hal is speaking of metaphorically is the error of human emotion and empathy. The soullessness of how the dead, rational, scientific, mind-mimicking machine is demonstrated through his murder of Frank and the crew. 
setting up in contrast Dave's response to the death of Frank. Dave shows empathy, soul, or emotional qualities and ventures into space to retrieve Frank's body. This decision based off of human compassion is what almost gets Bowman killed, set against the rational calculated devil computer Hal. Hal has no value for life in a spiritual sense. The Greek word for matter is H-Y-L-E. Hil, hil, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I read it in a book somewhere, but hil, the Greek word for matter. So Hal 9000 personifies the totality of matter itself. Matter absent of spirit, the ruler of the purely material world, kind of like Madonna. You could call this force or lack of spirit the purely physical the devil hal an extension of man's intellect through technology taken to its limits of logical perfection but a soulless machine can go no further dave outsmarts hal and risks death and safely re-enters the ship followed by the epic deactivation of the different components of the materially perfected computer mind of hal Man's rationality, represented by Hal, can only take man so far, and Dave is taken to those absolute limits. Jupiter and Beyond the Infinite The switching of Saturn in the book and Jupiter in the film sets up a sort of dualized contrast. Jupiter and Saturn act as polar opposites in an occulted sense, just as the sun and the moon. Jupiter associates with Jehovah or life, while Saturn, on the other hand, is associated with Satan and death. The switch from the movie to film sets up a two-in-one synthesis. My knowledge of the Tree of Life is limited, but I actually noticed a parallel with the black monolith positioning in this planetary alignment. The monolith lines up with the positioning of Dot. Dot is called the um, Hidden Realm. Okay, it is not one of the Sephirot. It is a hidden sphere or a, um, a truly occulted realm. And some people in Kabbalah speak of this realm as um, the void of the subconscious, the, the realm that we go into to connect to higher levels of consciousness through meditation. It is um, the unspoken. It is the, the abyss the veiled aspect of ourselves. Dot is considered one of the, uh, the, the places from which the tree emerges. So this is kind of the, I guess you could call it the realm of the birthing of the tree of life. Okay, the bir like the birthing of the soul. The alchemical symbol for Jupiter looks like an amalgamation of the number 42. 42 the degrees at which white light is refracted into a rainbow. I say it a lot, I know. The colors of the rainbow, the totality of the physical spectrum of light which man exists within. Hence Bowman's journey through the rainbow-colored interdimensional apotheosis Stargate. Bowman arrives at the waiting room before his rebirth into the Star Child. The room is full of light and decorated in gold. Gold, the perfected form of matter, when the two meet in one. Spirit meets matter, the alchemical perfection of gold. But first, Bowman must face old age and death to finish out his mortal existence. Old Bowman sees an even older Bowman consuming food in front of a depiction of humans in nature or possibly the tree of life. I'm guessing the star baby doesn't have to eat food unlike those darn bush babies. Ultra elderly Bowman in his deathbed resting under alchemical golden sheets and then the final interaction with the black monolith completes the death and birth process. Jupiter and Saturn are synthesized, and behold, the star child, eyes wide open, fully conscious even in the embryo. Man birthed into the heavens as a being of pure light. Well, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Please like, share, subscribe. Add anything interesting in the comments below. Thank you very much, and bye, bye.
You're still here? You see this black empty void right now on the screen of your smartphone? You're actually holding the black monolith right now. There's no going back. Just ask this bush baby. He used to be a regular human and he touched the black monolith and then he turned into a bush baby. So ain't no going back.